uh, presentation in three parts. A holistic view one of the subject of discrimination in itself. Um, and I will then talk about the conceptual challenges that you face. Um, I will not belabor the subject because obviously I'm dealing with an audience that has indeed, indeed has a fair knowledge of the concept. Um, but I, what I will focus on essentially is what the current position is in the law um, and indeed what the changes have, have taken place probably since the time the last time you were acquainted with this and also look at uh, possible, possible solutions and possible steps that you might want to take and also new advancements that may be of use to you uh, going forward. Um, the discrimination, should I say, in employment, uh, as it says, focused on the age category, is uh, governed by the Equality Act 2010, which came into effect on the 1st of October, at least part of which came into effect on the 1st of October. Um, and uh, it really has absorbed the uh, provisions of the Employment Equality Age Regulations 2006, which was the first time in which the age category uh, were given protection in the field of employment. Um, what it has done, as it's not necessarily the focus of my presentation, is actually extend protection for the age category beyond the field of employment for the first time into areas like uh, health and social care, goods and services and the like. Uh, but then, clearly, employment as a, as a, a, a focus area, and indeed for the age category, has come into effect on the 1st of October. Health and social care will come later on. Um, it sets out the definition of discrimination, which clearly is that uh, if a person is treated less favorably, uh, than another person for possessing a particular characteristic which the Equality Act defines uh, as under a number of categories such as age, disability, and so on and so forth, and of course age concerns us. So put, put pure and simple, if a person is treated less favorably than another simply on account of his age, that's direct discrimination. Now, indirect discrimination is the next uh, main category. Essentially, it is a policy put in place in an organization that puts a person at a disadvantage uh, compared to other persons within the same organization that is indirect discrimination and indeed unlawful. Now, there are other heads of less favorable treatments which amount to discrimination, such as harassment. Put simply, if a person is treated in a way that deprives him of his dignity, such as being subjected to abuse in the, uh, in the employment arena or in the, in the workplace, based on his age, then that itself is harassment. Victimization uh, occurs when a person is subjected to less favorable treatment purely because he has either been subject to, has either raised uh, a grievance against an employer or indeed supported the person who's raised a grievance, then he is um, being described as having been victimized on account of his age and itself is discrimination. Now, there are exemptions uh, to discrimination, because obviously discrimination can be lawful or unlawful. Now, lawful discrimination occurs in certain circumstances, of one being genuine occupational requirements. If, for instance, um, a job is advertised for a person who actually has knowledge of the uh, events at Dunkirk, clearly um, it excludes something like about uh, many percent of the population, and obviously means that a person of a certain age is the focus. That itself is an appropriate, uh, met, an appropriate means of discrimination. Now, you could also have circumstances where, uh, uh, where the law itself defines, uh, uh, defines a, a situation that actually causes discrimination, such as a default retirement age. Um, pure and simple, if an employer, if you go up, uh, a 65-year-old man before um, goes up to her for a job and he's told pure and simple, sorry, I can't employ you because the law says I can't. That's discrimination, but then it is lawful because the law says it is. I am also proud to mention that um, as you and I all, uh, as most of us know, the default retirement age has been abolished, or at least will be abolished by the October, October 1st, 2011. And uh, that was as a result of the work that we as an organization and several other organizations and groups had done over the years. And um, just to say a few words which are actually quite important about the default retirement age uh, as an aside. It, it will kick, the, uh, aboli the abolition will take place on the 1st of October 2011, but then no notices of retirement can be issued after April 2011. And any notices issued before April 2011, and which are scheduled to kick in after October 2011, are unlawful, void, and enforceable. Now, um, to end this part of my uh, presentation, I need to make categorical that the Employment the Equality Act specifically provided protection for the age category, and that is set in stone. That's kicked in from the 1st of October 2010. 
Now, I'm going to give you a bit of background as to the discrimination. I mean, I mean purely a statistical, uh, I mean, statistical content, which I, I believe is obviously your area of expertise and probably would make more sense to you. In 2009-2010, there was a 50%, 56% rise in successful discrimination claims. And there were 5,200 age discrimination claims, up 37%, from um, 2008 to 2009. 4,056 age discrimination claims, that's 78% uh, of the total figure, were withdrawn or settled before trial. What that in itself means, because clearly, um, if a claim is withdrawn before trial, it either means that the settlement has been reached, um, or a party has been essentially been convinced to withdraw uh, a claim on account of having either seen that there's not much prospect of success, or indeed having obtained some kind of satisfaction, be it on principle or otherwise. We do not have specific figures as to the distribution between withdrawn or settled, but we can certainly say that most claims are actually settled. This is based on, based on figures from ACAS themselves. Now, 104 claims were actually heard by the tribunals, of which 2% of the total figure were successful. And uh, the average award was £10,931, and uh, the highest award was uh, £48,710. What, what these figures mean, pure and simple, is that there has been an increase, one, in an, an awareness of uh, the regime of age discrimination, and indeed an increase in the determination of people subject to this to actually take action and enforce their rights. Now, uh, a, bit of, a bit about the work that we have done on our, as an organization has said, um, our simple ethos is that older persons should be equal citizens with equal rights and have opportunities to participate as workers as long as they're capable. Um, and uh, examples of the work we've done being the heyday case, which essentially was a UK's campaign to um, essentially challenge the default retirement age. We felt it should not be in the statute books because clearly well, our, our ethos is if, if, a, if a person is ready and capable to continue working and can to satisfy the, uh, the demands of the job on which they're actually uh, are applying for, they should be allowed this. Um, whereas we were unsuccessful, one thing that's certainly clear from the judgment was that the, uh, the judge, even the judge himself, accepted that the default retirement age was only, it was only a matter of time before it was going to go. And frankly, it, uh, as, as we all have seen, it eventually was removed from this, or will be removed from the statute books. We have campaigned for protection from age discrimination for older persons in employment for several years, not just the default retirement age, but essentially right across the board. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to say that uh, essentially this is where we're, we're more or less in our 60th year of, uh, of existence, and this has been a central theme. And indeed, you have seen the results of the work we've done over the years, I think, but I, as, they, as they say, enough about us. Now, my focus shall be on discrimination, essentially two parts, discrimination during recruitment and indeed discrimination post-recruitment, as in during employment. Now, the, the Equality Act provides, in summary, that a person, an employer must not discriminate against or victimize a person in A, arrangements made to offer employment, B, the terms of such an offer, or C, in deciding whether or not to offer employment. Now, um, I will also look, I will, let me, there are component parts to this, adverts. The simple fact is that an advert should not give the impression of preference for a particular category or indeed give the impression of discrimination or favoring or, 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 or disfavoring a category, especially the age category being our focus today. And uh, interview questions should not be framed in a way as to give the impression that the person, because I mean, I, I remember about 10, 11 years ago, I applied, whilst looking for, applying for a job, I was still categorical, well, listen, you're getting on a bit, aren't you? My simple reaction being, <laughs> in the back of my mind, was like, well, listen, I guess you know this means war, because certainly it was something that I would not countenance. Um, and um, it is something that you should not countenance because clearly the law makes clear that interview questions should be neutral. The, que the interview questions should be geared towards actually determining your skills for a job, your capability for a job, as opposed to uh, uh, your profile as uh, within a category, a protected category. Now, forms and questions should never be geared towards determining your age. Any such questions are illegal, enforceable, and discriminatory. Also, questions should not be geared towards determining the state of your health or disability information. Now, this has been qualified by the Equality Act as it, as it was, uh, as, it, as uh, should I say, effected on the 1st of October, in that this protection is only extended to persons with a disability at this stage. It will be extended to, broad, to broader categories, uh, uh, possibly going forward in the, in the next year. 